if you were looking at a quarter of a circle, it would be the exact same process. So I would have, say, four there. I'm imagining that I have this whole other three quarters of a circle here and that these segments are all equal. So one, two, three, three, four are all equal. So I'm going to put down here that my radius is four centimeters. Please don't get this confused with the diameter just because it's going the whole length of the shape. You've got to imagine that whole rest of the circle um, so that you can realize that it is that radius. So I'm going to continue using the formula that I know, a equals pi r squared, but because I know that I'm only looking for one quarter of the shape, I'm going to divide that by four to find that quarter. Now substituting pi times my radius of four squared divided by four. So pi times four squared is 16 divided by four. Pi times 16 on my calculator tells me it is 50.2655 and I've just realized that I've used the exact same number as I used for the previous example. Um, but anyway, so it's still dividing by 4 and my calculator tells me that that is 12.5664. I'm only going to want two decimal places, so I'm going to say 5, 6, but this 6 is higher than 5, so that's going to mean this one's going to round up. So 12.57. I'm looking at centimeters and its area so I know my units are squared. Because I did actually use the same numbers uh, for the last two questions, I'll just show you the comparison. So that quarter is 12.57 squared and if I go up 25.13, so half of that, which is to be expected because a quarter is a half of a half. You can repeat this with any other segments of circles as long as you know how many times that segment goes into um, a whole circle. So if you were dealing with a third of a circle, you'd be able to put um, pi r squared over three um, to find out how much a third of that circle is, just like we have done with this two for half a circle and this four for a quarter of a circle.